Money Mantra. Money Mantra. Manage your mind. All right, my people, here we are on another episode of The Money Mantra. I'm your host, Caesar Visual Zamudio, and today my guest is the founder and principal financial advisor of Profolio. And Profolio is a financial planning firm that specializes in property investment based in Albury, Australia. In 2014, she was awarded AMP Financial Advisor of the Year, and recently her business was named as a finalist for the Chamber Business Awards Outstanding New Business Category. She is also a keynote speaker and a published expert on finance and property investment. Say hello to Sarah Rogers. How are you doing, Sarah? Hi, Caesar. Thank you for that introduction. Oh, no um, doubt. It's bright and early over here in Australia. Um, for a Thursday morning, so excited to be having this chat and talking to you all about money. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I love it. So, um, is there anything you would like to add on to that? Anything else you'd like to tell us about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I guess what appealed to me when I saw your podcast, I think it was on Instagram a few months ago, um, was the balance that you had on Money Mantra, because something that I guess has sort of changed with the way that I look at money from when I first started out in the industry where I was just really gung-ho just to, um, you know, make as much as I can, work myself to the bone um, and know at the end of the day that I was going to be rich and that was probably what was important to me, um, to when I actually did start out the business and go into business and um, probably got to the point where I almost burnt myself out from working too hard and too so much stress that comes with the starting a new business and everything else that goes with it. Um, at that point then, it was probably when I started changing the way that I thought about money and my relationship with it to probably a more healthy level um, and started introducing things like yoga and wellness sort of things into my life, which helped me sleep, sleep and um, gain a better, I guess, balance between money and my corporate world and my normal life. So now I guess my money mantra and my thoughts around money is more about trying to find that balance. So yes, absolutely invest and do all these wonderful things, but make sure you're looking after yourself first. Def- um, yeah, so that's a bit about me. Awesome, definitely. I think that's great. You know, you got to get your sleep so you could uh, be healthy enough to make more money, right? Absolutely. That's <laughs> it. You lose your health, you lose your ability to make it. So, um, it's very important. All right, Sarah. So let's get into this first question. Uh, you mentioned it briefly right there, but uh, what exactly is your money mantra? And tell us what that means to you. Um, I guess now my money mantra is just make sure, make sure you're doing it, but make sure you're doing it with balance. So make sure you're putting away, you're investing, you're looking after your finances, because if you don't have your finances in order, you know, it makes it pretty hard to do everything else that you want to do in life. Um, as much as if you're not a money person, if you're not striving to reach your goals based on your finances, you're probably not going to achieve any of them. Um, so that's probably my main money mantra. Got you. All right. Um, so let's get right into talking about how you make money. Um, could you tell us your different streams of revenue and let us know exactly how sure. you earn them? Absolutely. Um, so I've always been, well, I've been for almost, I'm trying to think how old I am now, almost going up to 10 years, um, I've been a property investor, um, not quite that long, but yeah, started in property as my first investment, and I think property is probably still one of my favourite investments. Um, I like the ability that you can borrow into it to get higher asset levels um, and potentially compounded returns. Um then I also got started getting into share investing and managed funds and a little bit like that because I realised property was a really good thing to have, um, but if I needed money for something in the short term, such as, uh, you know, I decided to go on a holiday or, you know, some emergency happened and the hot water system broke, whatever it is, I just wasn't able to take that money out of the properties really fast if I needed it and if I didn't have enough to cover it in my personal buffer. So I sort of started using shares as my... Um, middle range investment, I guess you can say, so, or middle time frame sort of investment to complement my property portfolio. And then, of course, um, in 2015, I set up my business portfolio where we do financial planning. And from that, I take a wage 
normal person. Um, and also because it's a business, you've got the potential to take dividends, mm. um, which can add to your income stream for really giving you money for work, you know, having to do. So I guess the most important thing to me when I'm build, building these income streams is I want to try and build as many income streams as I can from not actually having to put my hours of time into it. So we've just also released some products on the website recently, which is using my IP um, and putting together some finance things that people can take away and use, but it also adds another income stream that takes me out of being the person that's having to do the work. Um, and funnily enough, now I'm doing my yoga teacher training, I've got yoga teaching, which I'm doing oh, for wow. a little bit of fun on the side that adds um, a little bit of income. So that's probably where I get all of mine, and I do think it's important to make sure you're having multiple income streams um, so you're not relying on just the one thing. Awesome, awesome. So you added yoga teaching to that. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, let me see right here. So, you know, we're talking about money. We we know that you're you're doing good for yourself now. Um, you know, I read your bio and it says that at 21 you read your first financial book and that's kind of what started things going for you. Am I correct? Yep. Okay. Yep, it sure was. So, I guess um before I was I think it was 2021. Um before then, I guess like most people, I presume, um, I didn't really have a clue about finance or investing. Um, it was just this world that was just so foreign to me. Like nobody in my family I knew invested. I came from a country town. Like there was no really, you know, these rich people that you aspire to be or anything like that. Um, life was really just, you know, live week by week and you're just struggling to get ahead. Just pretty simple. Um, the first book I read was Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, and I think this has to be the top of your list um, for books that you need to read on personal finance. Hmm. Um, and I guess the message that I took from his book really was that it doesn't matter where you come from, you can achieve anything that you want financially if you set your mind to it, and you can use heaps of different you know, ways to do that. There's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, so it was probably around then that I sort of went, oh, you know, there's this whole new world. I can choose to keep doing what I can, I've can. i been doing or I can choose to do something different and get a different result. So, um, yeah, that was that point for me. Awesome. So could you kind of tell us what was going on before you um, started getting into the financial world? Uh, you know, really walk us through, you know, your worst financial time, you know, any kind of struggles that you had. Walk us through those moments and, and let us know a little bit of what your mind state was like and uh, the type of things you went through. Absolutely. Um, that question's funny because this moment stands out so much to me now that I am in the position that I'm at because um, it, it didn't seem like at the time. At the time, I didn't realise that it was such a, you know, crappy position to be in. But now, years later, um, I think it was when I was about 19. I, at the time, I was earning about $300 per week. I was doing an apprenticeship. Um, not sure if you guys have that over in America, but it's just like a training ship yes. sort of thing. Sure. Um, at that time, I was paying $165 per week rent, and I had an electrical bill come in for $800. Oof. And based on my $300 wage, when you know, you've know got $130 left over after you pay rent, that was a pretty scary time in my life. And trying to work out how the hell I was going to pay off this bill was really stressful. Um, and of course I did, you call up the companies, you work on it, you do all that sort of stuff, but I remember not eating and going to work to, so I could eat free food that they had at work at the time, and, you know, just a completely different life to what I had now. So that's probably the moment that I look back on now and it makes you realise just how lucky you are to be in the position and why you've worked as hard as you have to get to where you are. Definitely. So what did you learn from that, you know, from, from being in that position where you're, you know, making a certain dollar amount and you're getting this bill that's like three times the amount of the money you're making and, um, you know, you had to just, it had to be bad. So what did you really learn from that? Um, I guess the main thing I learned is that you just don't, put your head in the sand um, and we see it all the time financially with clients and people that we're helping um, is the hardest thing or the worst thing that can happen when you have one of these hard things happen is just not doing anything about it. If you put a plan in place, own it head on and go, yep, this is it, let's get out of it, you're going to be so much more successful with these little things when they are going to crop up because we all know that these financial or otherwise, there's going to be things like this that happen in life. So that's probably the biggest lesson that I could pass on and say just just face it and deal with it 
Most definitely. Uh, Sarah, so you know what? I want to get a, a couple things from you that, that are really geared towards your expertise and finances. If I'm somebody yep. that's listening right now and I'm totally just having a, a miserable time with my finances, I don't know how to control them and, and I'm not very um, knowledgeable with my finances. What is a tip or two that you could really give someone that's listening that will help them right away? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I guess in that way, the first thing that I do is look at your money. So um, we have a really basic formula that I've put together over the last however many years um, for budgeting. And I know that budgeting sounds like a really boring thing when we're trying to talk about <laughs> it and invest and do all these wonderful things. But if you don't have your budget right and you don't know what you're spending money your money on, you're just not going to get ahead. So my tip is to make sure when you're looking at your finances – you're spending 50% on expenses. So expenses is your mortgage, your rent, your electric bills, your gas, all those other things. 30% on spending. So spending is your food, going out for dinner, your fuel for your car, and all those sort of little things that you use your car for. And always make sure that you're trying to put away the other 20% to savings or investment because that's the thing that's going to make your life a lot easier in years going forward. So that's my probably my first tip. And then from there sit down, write your goals, and start putting on a plan in place to actually achieve them. Excellent. like that. Uh, Sarah, what is something recently right now that, um, you know, maybe in the last six months, maybe a year or so that you're going through for your own personal development, uh, whether it might be a stressful situation or a struggle, um, anything that could be related to personal development, what are you going yeah. to do? What are you doing right now? And please walk us through those steps. Sure. Um, I guess, well, it's probably been the last 18 months because that's how long the business has been going for now, but probably starting a business. Starting a business has been singly the most challenging thing that I've done for myself, um, as well as financially and all these other things that go with it, but the amount of personal growth I think you have when you start a business is massive. <laughs> um, it's been so challenging in so many different ways. Um, cash flow, understanding, and I'm somebody with a finance background, but understanding cash flow and making sure that's fine for a business is just an ever going roller coaster of emotions, trying to make sure that everything's going right, you're doing everything you can, you're trying to build your team up um, and trying to get ahead. So, yeah, that's definitely been the most stressful area of personal development for me. Yeah, I see that. I could definitely um, relate to that as uh, um, I'm in the middle of a, a couple business ventures myself. Oh, my God. You know, I think we might have to talk to each other for 18 months to, to figure that one out. <laughs> but uh, we're working on it, though, right? We're working on it. We're absolutely, and I think I'm saying, you know, saying all of that, it's definitely this year has been a whole lot you know, easier already. And, you know, you, you have to expect the first 12 months or so of the business to be hard. Um, so we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. So can't say it's also that. Definitely, definitely. All right, Sarah. So I'm loving the way this is going. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear a little bit from the people that support the podcast. And then we'll jump right back into these last final questions. What's good, my people? So I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but video has 135% greater organic reach over audio, photos, or other type of media posts. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, a podcaster, an artist, or anyone else trying to get an audio message across, the best way to do this is to combine it with video and photo. And you could do this at wave.video. That's W-A-V-V-E dot video. Just go to their website. You could get a free account. And if you need any support, contact them. I've personally been able to work with Baird Hall. He's the founder. He's an awesome guy. He helped me set up everything for Money Mantra. So please go to wave.video. That's W-A-V-V-E dot video. All right, my people, we are right back here with Sarah Rogers on the Money Mantra, and we are getting into these last final questions. So Sarah, let's jump right into it. Please tell me, what is your biggest challenge when dealing with money? Biggest challenge? Um, I guess it has to come down to making sure that what you want in the future is more important than what you want now. So, you know, basic spending, not going out and buying that new dress or whatever it is and making sure you're really raining down on your spending. So um, I think for me and a lot of people that comes in is the number one hardest thing to do by far. Got you. How about personal mindset? What gives you a problem? Look at it. Um, Personal mindset is probably not being such a challenge for me. I'm a very driven person. Um, 
I guess it is hard, though, when you do have the down times, just to remember to keep kicking yourself back up. Um, so that's probably been the challenge there. Sure. How about your biggest strength when dealing with money? Biggest strength? Um, I guess it's in the reverse of what I said before. So I've got a, a really good way to look at it with things with a long-term view. So um, I'm quite happy to take less now and to not get the benefits of things now, knowing that, and with my foresight, that it's going to be a lot better in the future. So, um, and understanding how that plays out. So that's probably been a big point for me through my investing and through building a business and all these other things that has helped me get to where I am. Excellent. What's your biggest, uh, your, your strongest personal mindset? Strongest personal mindset, mindset. I guess this would be around the point of always keep learning. Um, I'm not sure if this is a mindset, but it's something that I live by all the time that you've got to be, you know, putting time into personal development, whether it's through your standard sort of tertiary education, so unis, all that sort of stuff, or if it's personal development courses and things like that. Like, it doesn't matter what point you get at in life, you should always be learning something. It should always be upskilling in some way. Definitely. So, Sarah, every day when you wake up, what is the greatest thing you're looking forward to? Um, you know, at the moment, I think it's balance. And I'm sort of getting to that point now where it, it's a lot more about helping other people than it is so much about helping me. Um, so, traveling, giving back, and, you know, finding that balance and spending time with my friends and my family why giving my clients and the people that I work with, you know, the same sort of freedom and flexibility that I am finding for myself. Awesome. Do you have a daily routine or a habit that keeps you focused on your goals? Sure do. Um, so it's funny that we're listening to it, but as, when I get up in the mornings, um, the first thing I do is switch on podcasts. So <laughs> I'm a massive fan of podcasts, so all different business podcasts, finance podcasts, personal well-being podcasts. I think when you get out of bed and the first thing you're thinking about is that sort of stuff, it just, you know, and podcasts normally are really good for motivating and inspiring you. And I think that's an awesome way to kick off the day. Dig it, dig it. Could you give us an app, software, service, or any other type of resource that helps you with your business or personal life? Sure. Um, I guess there's a, a few of them. The, I guess as a resource, I really like the entrepreneur. Site. I think they have some awesome articles on how to do different things um, and just help keep you inspired. But the other thing that I really love and what I think has helped our business, and I think is if you're not doing it, you're a little bit behind the times with how the economy is right now, is using outsourcing websites. So Odesk, Fiverr, um, Elabs, any of those sorts of things to outsource things. If you're not really great at it, and someone can do it for cheaper and probably more efficiently than outsource it. So that's probably my massive big thing. Great one. Do you have a book or film that you would recommend? And uh, please tell us why. Yeah, so it'd probably be back to Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, I just think it's a really nice style of writing about finance. And it, rather than being so much about what to do with your money, because there's a whole lot of books out there that do that, um, he's really big on the mindset and, you know, um, teaching you about how things can be differently. So everybody should have that in their top 10 books to read. Awesome. All right, sir. So, so this question right here, this is something um, I definitely have thought about since I was a kid and um, I'm sure many of us have. What yeah. would you do or what have you maybe already done with your first million dollars? Yeah, um, so this question sort of got me thinking because um, a million dollars back when I was a kid was absolutely a massive amount of money. But sure. The more I think about it, I have over a million dollars worth of assets now and it doesn't seem quite the um, amazing thing that I thought it would be when I was a kid. Um, but so I guess what, what would I do? I have a lot of my, most of my money is in investments and in my business. Um, so I probably do exactly what I'm doing now to start building my um, my financial position to allow me to have enough income coming off these investments to allow me to do the things that I really want to do. So my goal for myself is to spend two months or three months of a year traveling while running my business and all that sort of stuff. So um, by investing all of 
this stuff and putting all this infrastructure in place that's allowing me to do that stuff without having to lose out on other areas of my life. So, yeah, that's probably where I'm at with that one. Awesome. You know, it's interesting that you go with your answer because you're actually the first person to say that you have that amount or more going around right now. So for me to get that insight from you is, is pretty interesting to, to think that, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, wow, this is such a big amount of money. And then for you to tell me you have it and you're like, it's really not. <laughs> you know, It's so interesting. And especially like if I had to do to my bank account, that would probably be a different story. But right. when it's tied up in assets and... Um, like some of those assets have debt against it, of course. And things sure. Like, like it doesn't seem like it's you know a crazy amount anymore. So yeah. you know, for now, we'll probably be looking at that billion dollar mark and working our way towards there. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. I <laughs> and hear then that. I'll be inside. Exactly. I hear that. That's interesting. I, I love that answer, though. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, all right, Sarah. So we're wrapping up right now. Just please leave us with some final personal advice and definitely let everyone know where they could contact you. Yeah, cool. Um, final personal advice. I really think that just get out there and start educating yourself, listen to podcasts, you know, read books, all that sort of stuff. I did all I'm still doing and have been doing for a very long time now, all of my tertiary education um, and upskilling all of that side. But the, the best lessons and the most that I've ever learned is from the books, the podcasts, listening to other people and things like that. So get out there, make sure you're doing that. Um, where can you find me? You, depending what side you're interested in, if you're interested in the business, check out Profolio, which is P-R-O-F-O-L-I-O.com.au or look us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Profolio Financial Planning. Um, or if you want to follow my yoga journey, if you're interested in that side of things, it's um, on Instagram at the wine drinking yogi with underscore in between each word there. So um, happy to connect and happy to help out anyone that we can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. And as always to you and to everyone listening, peace, blessings, and hundreds of lessons to you. I appreciate you. This is the Money Mantra.